Kay there. I'm DIY Pete out in Bozeman, Montana. And today I'm going to show you how to hide all those ugly cables and wires that come down from your TVs. And we're going to do that using an in-wall cable management system. This is code compliant and it's a very simple do-it-yourself project. So I'll walk you through the steps. Let's go ahead and get started. So here's the problem. We have all these wires hanging down from the TV. They don't look good. We want to get rid of them. So this kit will allow it to have a nice clean look and then we'll put a entertainment center to hold all of the components and hide any of the plugins below. The kit is a great solution to hiding the wires because feeding your standard TV plugin behind a wall is not code compliant. This kit is very safe and simple to use. It is code compliant in the United States. It's very quick to install. There aren't any modifications to the electrical circuits and so you won't have any direct contact with any live electrical wiring and you will have professional looking results. For a quick overview of what we'll be doing, we'll be installing an outlet behind the TV, a lower outlet behind an entertainment center. We'll run code compliant wire to connect the two. We'll run our other wires behind the wall to hide them. And then we'll activate the circuit by plugging it in to an already wired plug-in. For tools, you'll need to pick up or borrow Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, a pencil, drywall saw, small level, utility knife, wire stripper tool, needle nose pliers, and an optional steel fish tape reel. And for supplies, you'll want to pick up a power cable management kit. I used one from the brand PowerBridge. A couple other models that they just came out with include the CK series and the Pro series. Definitely take a look at those as well. The kit I used included a PowerBridge power outlet, a PowerBridge power in, two wire boxes, a template, six feet of Romex, which is the in-wall wire, and one six-foot length power cord. For more details, information, and links to all the items used in this video, head over to DIYPete.com slash hide TV wires. We'll assume you already have the mounting bracket installed, the TV hung, and that the wires probably look something like this. To get started, I swiveled the TV out of the way, but if you don't have the long extension arms on your mount, I'd recommend removing the TV so you have plenty of room to work. Use a stud finder to find the studs in the wall and then decide where you want to place your power outlet. You'll want it to go between the studs and behind the TV. Go straight down from the upper power outlet we just marked for and use your stud finder on the lower portion of the wall to find the studs again. Always check for other wiring and pipes behind the drywall as well. Use the template provided to mark for the holes we'll need to cut that will be used for our power bridge power in outlet. Make sure that that cardboard template is nice and level. After marking for the lower outlet, you'll want to do the same thing for the upper outlet that is going to be behind the TV. Use a hand drywall saw to cut along the lines that we created using the template. Work your way around each side and once that's completed, you can remove that drywall and then get started on that second smaller hole. Then test to make sure the wire box and the power bridge outlet fit. If needed, you can always cut the holes a little bit wider. Repeat the same process for the upper outlet. First cut the larger box, then the smaller box. And test to make sure that the wire box and the power outlet both fit. Next, we'll get started feeding some of the wires and cables through the wall. I used a fish tape to help with this process because I had insulation behind the drywall and it made the process a lot easier. We'll start by taking the Romex cable and pulling it through using the fish tape. You can then feed the rest of the cables through the wall. I use the fish tape to help with this process and put an HDMI and then a networking cable through the smaller holes. The Romex cable should go through the big hole and all of the other cables should run through the smaller hole. Then push a tab out with a screwdriver on the wiring box so that you can feed the Romex into it. Push the wiring box into the wall and then you can tighten it into place using a screwdriver. And when you tighten the screws, it's going to flip the little tabs out and securely attach the box to the wall. Check out the diagram to learn how to correctly wire your outlet. You want to connect the black wire to the brass screw, the white wire to the silver screw, and the bare wire to the green screw. And I already did this and forgot to show it in the video, but if you haven't yet, use a utility knife to cut off the last three inches of the outer white coating then separate the individual wires and use a wire stripper to remove a half inch of the casing on the black and white wires. 
use the needle nose pliers to make loops on the end of each wire so that we can attach them to the screws on the outlet. Connect each wire to the correct screw and then tighten them into place using a screwdriver. Feed additional cables through the hole in the faceplate and then slowly push the power outlet into place. Then use a flathead screwdriver and the two screws provided to attach the power outlet to the wall. Use a level to ensure that it is perfectly straight. Installing the lower outlet is going to be very similar to how we did the upper one. You'll pull the Romex wire into the box and then slowly push the wire box into the wall. Tighten the wiring box into place using a screwdriver and then prepare the wires to connect to the outlet. This time do not bend the ends of any of the wires like we did previously for the upper connections. Push the straight end of each wire into the corresponding hole that matches the diagram in the instruction manual. The black wire will go into the hole that's tightened with the black screw. The white wire will go into the hole that's tightened with the silver screw. And the bare or ground wire will go into the hole that's tightened with the green screw. Then put the additional cables through the hole in the face plate on the right side and push the outlet into place. Attach the power outlet and face plate to the wall using the screws provided. Grab a vacuum or a broom to clean up the workspace and then wipe it down. Plug the TV cable into the new power outlet that you just installed and then take the component cables and plug them into the back of the TV as needed. Supply power to the new circuit we just created. Use the power connection cord and plug it into the closest outlet. I'd recommend using a surge protector. Then go ahead and turn your TV on, install your entertainment center, set up all of your components, and enjoy. All right, thanks so much for tuning in to DIY Projects with Pete, episode 17. For the complete show notes and links to the kits and components used in this project, head over to DIYPete.com slash Hide TV Wires. Please connect with me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash DIY Projects with Pete. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out some of the other projects on my YouTube channel. I hope this inspires you to do some of your own do-it-yourself projects. So good luck, have fun, and cheers from Bozeman, Montana. Don't forget to watch some of the other videos on my YouTube channel. Click on the left thumbnail to find out how you can make your own concrete patio table with a built-in cooler and LED lights. And for more reviews, like one on how to install a touchscreen keypad for your door, click on the video on the right. Lastly, please subscribe. All right, cheers, guys.